Okay, and welcome back. Uh, there's a new book out, and when I saw the title, I looked into it more. It's an e-book. Uh, very important. We are, as all of you know too well, living in an age of information overload, information deluge. Uh, information that is not information. It's lies. It's deceit. It's mind control. It's propaganda programming. All the rest of it. It's, uh, it's a very difficult issue. From the introduction of the book, How to Analyze Information. A Step-by-Step Guide to Life's Most Vital Skill by Herbert E. Meyer. We are living now through the early decades of the information revolution, and it's a miracle of human energy and ingenuity. Never before has so much information been available so easily and inexpensively about so many subjects. And therein lies the problem. Where do we begin to go through this? How do we begin to assimilate? Who do we trust ultimately? And do we have the intellect to process a lot of it because of the speed at which it is being thrown at us? Someone said years ago that the most important and valuable, powerful commodity on the planet was information. And governments let it out and then they reel it back in. They let it out and they reel it back in. They control the information flow and they therefore control the populace even more easily. So to talk about this and more is Herb Meyer, the author of the ebook How to Analyze Information. The so-called news media, uh, you're under no illusions, is largely a joke anymore. Journalism is a fading career and profession, unfortunately. But mixed in with it all is still a lot of very critical information. Uh, how did you get interested in this, and when did you realize there was a problem with the average person beginning to understand properly and to process all this stuff? I've been in the information business my whole life. Uh, I was a journalist. I worked for the Wall Street Journal. I was an editor mm-hmm. at Fortune magazine in New York. And then I was part of the Reagan administration as an intelligence official. So always dealing with information and complicated issues that right. you know, warp speed. Well, and then I, we I, moved, yeah. I'm sorry, I, right I didn't want to read your, your bio. I was going to get to that in a minute and kind of surprise people, but <laughs> you let it out of the bag. That's okay. You that's act. fine. No, no. Uh, the, the issue is you're an insider, and that's why this book is so important. I mean, here's a man who literally is and has been on the inside of the track for a long time. So please go ahead, Herb. You know, secrets aren't such a big deal. The most interesting thing you discover if you're a senior official of the CIA is that it's just more information. Some of it's good, some of it isn't so good. Can I disagree with one thing you said a few minutes ago? Mm-hmm. You said information's the most valuable commodity. So Some say it is. No, it's insight. Aha. Uh-huh. It's understanding. Information's raw material. Got to be processed. Right, it's got to be processed. And as you did say, what's happening is we're drowning in the stuff. Yeah. There's information coming at you from every direction. Some of it's very good. Some of it is just wrong. Some of it, it is intentionally wrong, obviously. That's where ideology comes into the whole mix. But when you get so much information coming at you so fast, like getting hit you know, with a fire hose, you've got to be able to stand back, sort through it, mm-hmm. and figure out where you're going, what you need to know, right. and how to get it. Now, the sad part about that is... A lot of Americans have been brought up in the government school system now and are are not being taught to think and to attack problems like you've just laid out. And this it's a problem that's it's soluble to a large degree within each and every one who cares to. But when you have a lot of people who would rather say, hey, hell with it, I've got my TV, I've got my friends, I've got my toys, I've got my drugs, I've got my fun, I don't need this crap, and they check out. So those people are lost. We have to concentrate on those who want to stay in the game and figure it out. Well said. And by the way, there are a lot of those people. There are. But as you said, in today's schools, they really don't teach how to think. And when you teach talk how about to how to analyze information, mm-hmm. what you're really talking about is how to think. Exactly. They, they teach our young people how to react, whether it's in school or in the so-called celebrity pop culture of the mass media. They're being taught and conditioned to react, not to, to proact. They don't do that anymore. Go ahead, please. No, I, I, it's hard to go ahead. I agree with you. <laughs> huh? that, that's what's happening, but that leaves all the rest of us on our own out there. 
And so what I tried to do in how to analyze information is just stand back from it a little bit and say, well, what have I learned? How do you actually do this? And let me give you an example. If you have a friend who wants to cook dinner and you know, hold a dinner party, mm -hmm. you can say, well, broil this and fry that and do that. What if they don't know how to do any of that? What if they've never been taught? What if they've not been taught how to shop for raw ingredients or set the table? It's all those steps you have to take mm -hmm. to put it together. And you, you just sort of skim right over them. You say, well, everybody knows that. Well, as you said, they don't teach that. So what I tried to do in how to analyze information is slow it down a little bit and say, how do you actually do it? And that's what that's about. There's so much noise out there now. <laughs> there is. My goodness. Now, when you were with the Reagan administration and, and back then, uh, things have have catapulted at such a pace now that I actually do feel sorry for many young people. Not only are they not being given the skills to deal with the information deluge, but even when they are, they, they just they get overloaded. And they say, wait a minute, this isn't a lot of fun. It's hard work. It is hard work. And you know something that always has been? It was difficult to get information a hundred years ago. And so your problem was you couldn't get it. Well, now you can get it and you have to sort through it. So it's a different problem. It's not that we've never had the problem before. Mm -hmm. the, the skill of thinking, the ability to reach a reasonable conclusion based on the evidence ah. isn't a new problem. Mm -hmm. The technologies change. Uh, you know, you, you can say that hundred years ago there were no supermarkets. Well, that was easy. You just got with a local grocer hat. Mm -hmm. Now we've got supermarkets, super supermarkets, all kinds of things. That's <laughs> not bad. That's good. You have bigger choice, but you it's can drive yourself crazy. Choice overload. Choice <laughs> overload. It's not a bad thing if you've learned how to sort through it. When you say a guide, give us more of an example of what you're offering people here. If you're trying to look, for example, at the future of our country's economy, mm -hmm. well, you need to know where it is. Mm -hmm. And honorable people can disagree about that. But you have to sort of resolve that and say, okay, here's where we are. Mm -hmm. And we then, are in deep doo-doo. <laughs> no kidding. You notice that. Yeah. We are. Then you have to be absolutely sure you're not looking at information through a prism. You know, prism is one of those triangular bars of plastic or glass. Yeah, we have more people in prism than any other country on the planet, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Different thing. If you're looking at the world through a prism, everything you see will be distorted. And, and everybody has a prism, don't they? Well, Isn't that called ego and worldview and, and life view and all the rest of it? And then yes, the, and ideology is another word for sure. it. Sure. And that's exactly right. And you have to strip that away. There is such a thing as reality. You know, you can look at me through a prism and, and think I'm 10 feet tall and purple, but I'm not. And if you're looking at me straight on, mm -hmm. you'll see what I really do look like. Mm -hmm. So you have to push all that stuff out of the way. Now, again, we do this mentally. It's not, not a physical thing. Uh -huh. But you actually have to slow down a minute and say, am I sure I'm seeing this clearly? Then you have to figure out what do you need to decide? What are you trying to figure out? If we're talking about the American economy, you want to know, is this thing going to go off a cliff or not? So you have to, what you're saying is, quite clearly, is one has to have a set of viable parameters and a general baseline understanding of a problem before they can take in new data and come to a rational conclusion about it. Yes, and the first thing you have to know is, what's the problem? All right. What is the problem? Now, again, people can often disagree about that. You and I may say, well, the problem is the government spending more money than it's got. And that's unsustainable. And if something's unsustainable, mm -hmm. something happens. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? And then you get to the real tough part, which is what information will answer the question? In other words, if you had it, you'd uh -huh. know the answer. Sounds like a geometry. Well, it issue. almost is in a way. A and then you have to go out and get that information. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes that's easy. You can sit at your computer, you can Google around, you can search Get it. Other times you have to go out and talk to uh, people. You're not going to get it by watching CNN. That's for no, sure. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. But you have to break it all down into that step-by-step -step process mm -hmm. and 
before you know it, you're beginning to move toward an understanding that you hadn't had before. And suddenly all of that noise begins to evaporate. You're actually beginning to see something clearly. You can see where you're going. And what I've tried to do, and that's why I called it a guide, is just to walk the reader through how you do that. Uh Whether you're trying to decide something simple like where should we go for dinner tonight or something very complex about where's the war going, what's likely to happen with the U.S. economy. It's the same process, although the stakes vary. Very good point. 